Hello and a very warm welcome to Science Monitor, your weekly update on what is happening in the field of science, technology, research and innovation to change the SNT landscape of the country and impact your life. I am Ashwarya Kapoor with you. From the introduction of the Indian Antarctic Bill 2022 in the Lok Sabha to the novel technologies developed by Indian researchers to overcome medical disorders, we have plenty in store for you. But first, let's begin with the headlines. Indian Antarctic Bill 2022 tabled in the Lok Sabha, introduced by Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh, the bill proposes to provide a regulatory framework for India's research activities in the continent. About 33.6% of the Indian coastline is under varying degrees of erosion. The scientific analysis provided by the National Centre for Coastal Research is helping the Ministry of Earth Sciences in designing solutions. Improved silica nanoparticles developed for better drug delivery systems. Researchers at SENSE and CSIR NCL have increased the drug loading capacity of the nanoparticles by adopting a new approach. And a novel bone regeneration technology will effectively overcome the challenges related to bone disorders. Professors from IIT Kanpur develop an innovative material to fabricate active bone substitute. And now the news in detail. On April 1st, Union Minister of Science and Technology and Earth Sciences Dr. Jitendra Singh introduced the Indian Antarctica Bill 2022 in the Lok Sabha. The bill drafted by the Ministry of Earth Sciences proposes to provide a regulatory framework for India's research activities in the Antarctic and also for protecting the environment of the continent. Let us see our report to get more details. During the proceedings of Lok Sabha on the 1st of April, the Union Minister of Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, Dr. Jitendra Singh, introduced the Indian Antarctic Bill 2022 in the Parliament. The bill has been drafted by the Ministry of Earth Sciences, Government of India. Recently approved by the Union Cabinet, the bill proposes to draft a law to regulate activities in and around the Indian research stations in the continent. The draft will enable India to clearly define the activities it intends to permit and the activities it seeks to prohibit in the near future. The question is that if in the territory occupied by the Indian research station some unlawful activity happens, how to check it? Because I agree with you, it is no man's land. No, please. In the Antarctic Treaty, an answer was determined for this. It was made mandatory for all the 54 countries that whichever area is occupied by your setup, you enforce your country's law. Yes. And to, in order to honor that, this bill has been brought to seek the sanction of the parliament. Like for example, now secondly, secondly, there will be no bureaucrat, maybe one liaison officer to, to, maybe a law officer, just to check that no unlawful activity in the form of somebody trying to do some mining there, somebody trying to do some marine violation there. So this is done with a very noble objective with the consensus of all the countries. It is important to recall that for the purpose of preserving the environment of Antarctica, which was declared a no man's land, an international treaty was signed by 12 nations in 1959, prohibiting any military activity on the continent. India signed the treaty in 1983 and received consultative status in the same year. Today, India is an integral part of the various international commissions and programs associated with Antarctica. Like the Commission for Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, Council of Managers of National Antarctic Program and Scientific Committee of Antarctica Research and the Madrid Protocol to the Antarctic Treaty. All these representations show India's significant position among the nations involved in the Antarctic research. India has successfully launched 41 annual scientific expeditions to Antarctica to date and has two active research stations named Maitri and Bharati in the continent. 
The proposed bill will set national measures to deal with undesirable activities in these areas, which will be applicable to Indian citizens as well as foreign nationals entering the region. According to an analysis by the National Center for Coastal Research or NCCR of the Ministry of Earth Sciences, about 33.6% of the Indian coastline is under the influence of active erosion. The NCCR, which has been monitoring coastal erosion for nearly two decades, has identified vulnerable coasts based on studies from 1990 to 2018. On the basis of this, the Ministry of Earth Sciences is helping the coastal states to implement shoreline protection measures. Let us see the report to know more. India being a large peninsula is a country with a long coastline as this vast coastline is the cornerstone of a large economy, any undesirable change in its geographical location as well as biodiversity raises several concerns. Therefore, rising sea levels and active erosion of the coastline are sure to pose challenging problems. The National Centre for Coastal Research under the Ministry of Earth Sciences has been monitoring erosion of the Indian shoreline since 1990. An analysis conducted by the centre from 1990 to 2018 reveals that about 33.6% of the Indian coastline is affected by erosion in varying degrees. Recently, during question hour in Rajya Sabha, the Union Minister of Science and Technology and Earth Sciences Dr. Jitendra Singh shared this information in a written reply. The National Centre for Coastal Research at Chennai monitors shoreline erosion using remote sensing data and GIS mapping techniques. The centre analysed 6,632 kilometres of mainland Indian coastline over the past two decades and found that a large part of this coastline is constantly changing and eroding. According to the analysis, an increase in the frequency of cyclones, rising sea levels, construction of ports, beach mining and construction of dams are the major causes of coastal erosion. The centre has prepared 526 maps to identify affected areas including maps of 66 districts and 10 states and union territories. Based on these maps, the National Assessment of Shoreline Changes along the Indian coast was released in July 2018. The digital and hard copies of all these maps were released on March 25, 2022, celebrating the Foundation Day of the NCCR. With the objective of preventing coastal erosion, pilot projects were undertaken by the Ministry of Earth Sciences at two locations. One of these is the Puducherry Beach Restoration Project, which has helped in the restoration of 1.5 km long city beach and the other pilot project was carried out at Kadalur Periyakuppam in Tamil Nadu, where an offshore submerged dike was constructed to improve the safety of the coast as well as the population. Apart from this, the National Centre for Coastal Research also assists in implementing coastal protection measures in the vulnerable coastal stretches of Kerala, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh and Goa. Researchers from the Bengaluru-based Centre for Nano and Soft Matter Sciences have developed better silica nanoparticles to improve the targeted drug delivery systems. The research carried out in association with the Pune-based CSIR National Chemical Laboratory increases the drug loading capacity of the mesoporous silica nanoparticles and makes them more stable under physiological conditions. Let us find out more through our report. For the treatment of any disease, patients are usually prescribed or administered medicines in the form of liquids or tablets. 
The molecules of these medicines spread throughout the body, having an effect of the desired place where the problem is. However, since this is not a targeted drug delivery system, the medicine also reaches areas where it is not needed. This also means that high doses of drugs are given to the patients, increasing the risk of side effects. Therefore, researchers worldwide have been working on various drug delivery systems. In this series, scientists at the Bengaluru-based Center for Nano and Soft Matter Sciences, an autonomous institute of the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, have developed improved silica nanoparticles to deliver the correct dose of drugs at the desired location in the body. Developed in collaboration with the researchers of the Pune-based CSIR National Chemical Laboratory, the technology will lead to better drug delivery systems, minimizing the side effects of the drugs. The study has been published in the journal Particle and Particle Systems Characterization. What we have developed is what are called mesoporous silica nanoparticles. So these are spherical particles, but they have pores inside. Okay, so inside those pores, we basically can load the drugs and outside the pores or like on the silica particles, we can put some targeting molecules. These targeting molecules drive the silica particles to the desired location. They will not take the silica particles anywhere else or if they have, they have gone somewhere else, they will not deliver the drug there. They will just come back and again deliver the drug at the desired location. Mesoporous silica particles are widely used as drug delivery systems. However, the current approach to modify their surface first and then load them with the desired drug leads to much lower drug loading as the pores get closed by the outer surface molecules. Now, researchers from CENS and CSIR NCL have transformed these silica nanoparticles into an amphifunctional system having hydrophobic pores and hydrophilic surface functionalization. Also, the researchers first loaded the drugs into the pores and then carried out the surface modification for targeted delivery. This resulted in higher drug loading capacity and improved the overall functioning of the drug delivery system. We make mesoporous silica nanoparticles, put a very small molecule on the surface, right, that doesn't block the pore, then put the drug inside, then use this small molecule or small entity to build on further delivery uh, agents you know, or targeting agents. This way more drug can be incorporated inside the pore and not only that because you are now putting another molecule on the surface this can be a stimuli responsive if there is a, a change in the in the body temperature or if there is a change in the pH what we call acidity levels in the body. So depending on that the drug can be released. This research study by Indian scientists can give a fillip to the medical field. The team expects the findings of these studies would become guiding principles to design better drug delivery systems. A better drug delivery system will make it possible to deliver the drug to a specific place in the body with precision and eliminate or minimize its side effects. Resistance to antibiotics can also be controlled using this new system. at IIT Kanpur have developed an indigenous technology to develop and fabricate an active bone substitute. This active bone substitute can overcome various challenges related to bone fractures and bone loss while also being cost effective. Recently, the institute transferred the technology to a private company to bring a paradigm shift in bone regeneration technology. Let us see a report to get more details. Thousands of accidents occur in India every day and the most common outcome of these accidents is bone fractures leading to bone loss. Apart from this, many diseases can also lead to bone loss and bone disorders. Even little gap left between bones and joints during repair or reconnection of broken bones leads to a number of problems. 
These gaps are filled using ceramic or synthetic materials, but these treatments usually increase the risk of infection and immune-related complications. Keeping these challenges in mind, Professor Ashok Kumar and Arun Kumar Tevatia of the Department of Biological Sciences and Bioengineering at IIT Kanpur have developed a novel solution. The technology provides a collagen nanohydroxy apatite composite porous gel, which is a potential approach for reconstructing irregular bone defects and dental applications. The material is capable of biocompatible bone regeneration and can also be used as a bone substitute, overcoming autograft limitations. Basically, at the moment, actually, what is being done actually in this area actually is to use actually bone grafts that's actually typically taken as autografts actually or allografts actually taking it from the same patient actually or taking it actually from another donor. Particularly, actually, is done by the cadaver bone actually. But those are uh, various limitations actually for the application point of view actually. So this type of bone substitute actually uh, will be the first as of its type actually in the Indian market. The innovation can act as a carrier for bone active biomolecules, delivering them directly at the implant site. The novel material is biodegradable and has both osteoinductive and osteopromotive properties, which essentially means it can heal bones and encourage new bone growth. The technology is designed in such a way that its biomolecules are well coordinated with the cells responsible for the mineralization of bones. The porous composite scaffolds being used in this technique can be used as fillers for large sized bone defects without any side effects. Recently, the technology was transferred to Ortho Regenics Private Limited. Right now, uh, active bone inducing uh, bone uh, synthetic substitutes are being imported from abroad. There are only one or two products in the world we are importing and uh, which are very, very expensive. Most people cannot afford that. So uh, it is uh, the society really needs uh, these kind of materials to be um, uh, to be innovated and uh, manufactured in India so that our population can utilize this. And if it is innovated and uh, manufactured in India, we can probably use this for every fracture case so that these 20 percent of patients do not go into non-unions or delayed unions or even some cases where there is a bone loss due to surgery like tumor excision and all these cases. It can be used in those uh, cases also. Most of the ingredients still being used to correct bone disorders and effects are imported, making the treatment expensive. Developed by researchers from IIT Kanpur, this indigenous technology will be able to provide affordable treatment to lakhs of patients. The technology is also in line with the new medical devices policy of the Government of India, an initiative to make India self-reliant in medical devices. And now let's have a quick look at some other developments that have made news in the field of science and technology in our segment, Science Express. The Union Minister of Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, Dr. Jitendra Singh, has informed that under the pilot phase of the Umid Initiative, National Inherited Disorders Administration Kendras have been established at five government hospitals spread in four states of the country. The unique methods for management of inherited disorders or the Umid Initiative was started by the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India to address the burden of genetic disorders in the country and comprehensively includes services like prenatal testing for genetic disorders. In the next phase of the Umid Initiative, the Nidan Kendras are being expanded to institutes in different states including Bihar, and these will be in government hospitals including AIMS, depending upon capacity. It should be noted that the initiative was launched by the Ministry of Science and Technology on the 23rd of September 2019 to benefit those who cannot afford expensive care for genetic disorders. 
A polyherbal eco-friendly technology can combat tick infestation among dairy animals. The National Innovation Foundation NIF India, an autonomous body of the Department of Science and Technology, has developed and standardized this eco-friendly formulation comprising common herbal ingredients like neem and nagore. This formulation has been found to be effective in combating tick infestation among dairy animals. Dairy farmers often face problems due to tick-infested livestock. Ticks are external parasites found widely in cattle sheds across all geographical regions. Tick infestation causes loss of appetite among animals, causing reduction in milk production. They are also carriers of systematic protozoan infection and hence a threat to dairy animal health and productivity. Presently, farmers are dependent on costly chemical solutions. Farmers can easily prepare the innovative formulation to get rid of heart tick infection and also the etiological parasite, Ripicephalus in cattle. In a worrisome development, scientists have discovered microplastics in human blood for the first time. Researchers also warn that these ubiquitous particles could also be entering vital organs. Microplastics have already been found almost everywhere else on Earth. Along with the environment, these microscopic particles have also entered the food chain. Under a Dutch study published in the journal Environment International, Blood samples from 22 anonymous healthy volunteers were examined and microplastics were found in nearly 80% of the samples. Half of the blood samples showed traces of pet plastic widely used to make drink bottles while more than a third had polystyrene used for disposable food containers and many other products. Through this study, the scientists were able to detect and quantify such microplastics in human blood for the first time. The study was funded by the Netherlands Organization for Health Research and Development, as well as Common Seas, a UK-based group aimed at reducing plastic pollution. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has discovered the farthest star ever seen to date. The star is more than 12.9 billion light years away and likely existed within the first billion years after the beginning of the universe. The star system is officially called WHL 0137 LS, but it has been nicknamed Arundel, which means morning star. While a lot of evidence points towards Arundel being a star, Scientists will have to wait for more data before confirming whether it is a single star or a cluster of two or more. Scientists will need data from Webb to conclusively confirm that Arundel is indeed a single star and even to measure its brightness and temperature which will yield more information about its type, composition, etc. That is all in today's edition of Science Monitor. Keep sending your feedback and suggestions through email. Our email ID is indiascience at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at vigyanprasar, A50, Sector 62, Noida, 201309, Uttar Pradesh. So, we will take your leave now. See you again next week. Till then, stay safe and think scientifically. Bye for now.